Hey fellow lab rats, this is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be going over three practice problems, uh, practicing the indirect LDL calculation. Alrighty, let's get started. So to start off here, I wanted to recap on LDL cholesterol. So there are two different types of methods for evaluating a patient's LDL level. So the first method is an indirect method. And so this is done by a calculation. Um, and this it's important to note that this calculation is only valid when the patient's triglycerides are under 400 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, so when a patient gets a lipid panel done, so this is is a direct me measure of total cholesterol, a direct measure of HDL, and a direct measure of triglycerides, we can uh, indirectly calculate the patient's LDL level. Now, if the patient's uh, triglyceride levels are 400 and above, um, then the LDL cholesterol level needs to be directly measured by the analyzer. But uh, the majority of patients, uh, normal patients, of course, can get their LDL uh, indirectly calculated. All right, so I've got three uh, patients here that we're going to go through practice problems on. All right. So the first patient uh, has a total cholesterol level of 160 milligrams per deciliter. And remember your reference ranges, of course, so 160 milligrams per deciliter for a total cholesterol level is normal. HDL cholesterol is 60 milligrams per deciliter, so this is an also a normal uh, range. Um, and then the patient's triglycerides are 140 milligrams per deciliter. Um, so we need to be able to calculate the patient's indirect LDL level. So first off, are we able to do this? Yes, the answer is yes, we can. And the reason for it is the triglycerides here are under 400 milligrams per deciliter. So we can proceed to doing the calculation. All right, so I have the calculation up here. So recall it's LDL equals total cholesterol minus uh, HDL plus triglycerides over five. All right, so the first step here, I'm gonna use my little pointer here, LDL equals, all right, so we wanna do total cholesterol. So this is this number here. So we want 160. It's kind of hard to write with this pointer here. I'm actually using my mouse. And then we're going to subtract, just kind of plug, plug and chug here. So the HDL level, so this patient's HDL is 60. So we're gonna put 60 in there, plus the patient's triglyceride level. So the patient's trig triglyceride is 140. So we're gonna put 140, and don't forget that divided by five. So we're gonna take that 140 divided by five. So a common error, error here is uh, students will take 60 plus 140 and then divide that whole thing by five. It is not, it's just the triglycerides over uh, five. All right, so 140 divided by five is 28. So we're going to do 60 plus 28. All right, so 60 plus 28 is 88. And then of course we can't forget this 160. So everything in the parentheses equals 88. So we're gonna take that 160 minus that 88, and that gives you 72 milligrams per deciliter. Alrighty, and that is your indirect LDL value. Uh, so again, remember your reference ranges is 72 milligrams per deciliter LDL um, uh, measurement or calculation um, is uh, normal for this particular patient. Alrighty, let's go to the next one.
So practice problem number two. So this patient's total cholesterol level is 250 milligrams per deciliter. So uh, this is an elevated total cholesterol level. Uh, HDL cholesterol level is 40 milligrams per deciliter. So this is within normal range. However, it is on the lower side of normal. And if you recall, HDL cholesterol is what we consider the good cholesterol. And so you actually want higher levels of this. So this 40 milligrams per deciliter, it is within the normal range of course but it's kind of on the lower range of normal and so you, you really would uh, it's preferable to have it higher than this and then the patient's triglyceride levels are 350 milligrams per deciliter and this is an elevated triglyceride level uh, so what is this patient's indirect LDL level? So the first things first, we need to determine, are we able to even calculate this patient's uh, indirect LDL level? And the answer is yes, because this triglyceride level is under 400 milligrams per deciliter, so it's 350. So we can go ahead and proceed to the calculation. So let's go to the next slide and let's uh, uh, plug this one in. Alrighty, so again, here's our calculation. So we're gonna do LDL, equals the patient's total cholesterol, so 250, 250 minus, and then here's our parentheses here. So what's the patient's LD, or I'm sorry, HDL. So the patient's L, uh, HDL is 40. I can't talk today, apparently. Maybe I shouldn't be recording. Uh, plus triglyceride level. So this patient's triglyceride level is 350. So we're going to put 350 here. And again, don't forget to put that divided by 5. There we go. All right. So 350 divided by 5 is 70. So we're going to put that here. Again, there's the 40. Okay. So 40 plus 70 is 110. So in the parentheses, that result is 110. And then we need to bring this down. So 250 minus 110. And the answer for that is 140 milligrams per deciliter. So 140 milligrams per deciliter is your result for your indirect LDL. And that is an increased level of LDL, which, which makes sense because if you could look at these other these other lipid results, uh, total cholesterol, HDL, and triglycerides, there's obviously some, um, some issues going on there. So it makes sense that the patient's indirect LDL would be elevated. Alrighty, so that's practice problem number two. Let's go ahead and move on to practice problem number three. Okay, so practice problem three. So this patient's total cholesterol is 210 milligrams per deciliter, so that's a little bit elevated, um, higher than uh, what the normal reference range is. Uh, HDL cholesterol is 30 milligrams per deciliter, and that is lower than the normal reference range. And recall, HDL is the good cholesterol, so you want a higher level of HDL, and this is lower, and it's actually lower than the normal reference range. And then this patient's triglycerides are 450 milligrams per deciliter, which of course is elevated um, as well as the total cholesterol. Um, so what is this patient's indirect LDL level? So the first thing we need to do is determine whether or not we can do the calculation in the first place. So triglycerides are 450 milligrams per deciliter. So what does that mean? That means no, we cannot do the indirect LDL calculation. And the reason for that is the uh, calculation is only valid if the triglycerides are under 400 milligrams per deciliter. And this patient has a 450 milligram per deciliter triglyceride level. So the patient cannot have their indirect LDL calculated. So what does that mean? It's just that does that mean that just the patient doesn't get an LDL level? No, of course not. It just means that we can't perform the calculation. And what we would have to do is do a direct LDL measurement. And so this means that the analyzer actually has to not rely on the calculation, but actually directly measure the LDL level. Okay, all right, so those are three practice problems for indirect LDL calculations. Hopefully this helps you out. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like, and then be of course uh, to uh, subscribe to my channel for more educational laboratory content. And as always, if you have any questions about this or any other lectures, um, please feel free to leave any questions in the comments. I'll be happy to answer those for you. Alrighty, until next time.